they use whatever data they can. It's this. It's the the argument that always is made is that I can go on Google and I can look up you know right. whatever I want, whatever side of any issue, and I can find the yep. data to back me up. They pick the lab studies they want, and then they use that to extract whatever power they can. And it goes back to a conversation we had, George, a while ago on the show about these disaster declarations, where it's the executive has, has so much authority to take control right. and to start demanding that certain entities do as they ask because of these disaster declarations. That Which is totally fine on a very short-term basis. Yes. COVID-19, I'm not going to tell you guys anything you don't already know here. COVID-19 provided governors, mayors, uh, local leaders with all kinds of opportunities to expand their power, right? Their influence over citizens. Uh, we saw these uh, most, we saw this most egregiously happening, of course, in Democrat controlled areas, states and, uh, and cities and counties. And uh, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf uh, often came up as one of the worst offenders in that, right? So we've gone from the left coast all the way over to the other side of the, of the continent to Pennsylvania. Uh, but this week, two constitutional amendments uh, passed statewide referenda that uh, provide the state's General Assembly with, quote, more power to block energy, or I'm sorry, <laughs> emergency declarations. Uh, I'm quoting here from a story in the Western Journal by our own uh, contributor, Elizabeth Stauffer, uh, or Stauffer, I'm not sure, Elizabeth, how you pronounce your last name. I should probably pronounce it like the lasagna, like since the, I'm a like fan. Mac and cheese. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a fan, <laughs> so we'll just go with, with Stauffer. She can correct me later if she wants. Uh, the amendment uh, of the Pennsylvania Constitution grants the legislature the uh, ability to terminate the governor's COVID-19 disaster emergency declarations without governor approval. So prior to the amendment, it worked pretty much like it works everywhere. The state house and the state Senate would have to uh, pass measures and then the government would have to sign them. Well, of course, any time the Republican-controlled legislature tried to curb the Democratic governor's power grab, he vetoed it. And, <laughs> and it was tough to get a two-thirds vote, uh, you know, to uh, overcome the veto. With the passage of this resolution, a simple majority vote by the House and Senate is all that's necessary. So there is no um, veto power available to the governor any longer. Now... Democrats responded to this. I'm not sure who um, we were quoting with this, but, and I, if I, even if I did know who it was, I don't know that I'd name them because it is such a stupid thing to say. The Democrat response was they were worried that the legislature would now act, quote, to cancel COVID-19 emergency declarations without considering public health or consulting with the governor's office. I'm sure that's what the Pennsylvania legislature is going to do. Public health? Never heard of it. Let's just do this thing over here. Governor Wolf? No. Why, who? I don't know. Yeah, no. Let's just do this thing anyway. It's an absolutely ridiculous, brainless statement. That's not how any politician on the planet has ever worked. It's so, I mean, that's the best complaint they had. That's their best argument. Yeah, we think they're, we think the legislature wants to ignore public health. That's what we really think they want to do. Yeah, okay. Uh, a couple of state Republican lawmakers, the Senate Majority Leader and Senate President, were forced to respond to that idiocy and did so uh, in much more measured terms than I would have. They said that this decision by the people is not about taking power away from any one branch of government. I don't know that I agree with that, but that's what they said. It's about reestablishing the balance of power between three equal branches of government as guaranteed by the Constitution. Now, Governor Wolf... Uh, said uh, that Republican, this is according to the morning call, that Republicans were injecting partisan politics into emergency disaster response in a, quote, thinly veiled power grab. And he warned that the provisions were a threat to a functioning society that must respond to increasingly complicated disasters. I don't know why they're increasingly complicated except by the uh, tendrils of yeah the, the ever enlarging state uh, but what do you think about that statement Governor Wolf called these amendments a thinly veiled power grab by Republicans right or wrong Cameron is that what this was wrong so wrong <laughs> it's the if any if anything the big lesson from this pandemic had nothing to do with public health no 
it had to do with how power hungry so many of these officials were. And right now we are coming out of this crisis. If anyone thinks that in the United States, um, with very few exceptions of certain local areas, we are no longer, we should no longer be in crisis mode. And if the governors are still treating this like they are in crisis mode, that is an immediate red flag that they are liking their power a little bit too much. We saw it here in California that until Gavin Newsom got threatened with a recall vote, yeah. oh, look at that. All of a sudden, things start opening up. French laundry incident happens. All of a sudden, more things start opening up. When you, as an American citizen, don't hold your own people accountable, hold your own politicians accountable, they think they can get away with anything. And what this crisis has done is it's given them an excuse. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's calling this a power grab by Republicans is such a, it's such a dirty lie for him to try and spin this. And he knows at this point that there's almost nothing that he can do now. Um, so his last thing is, oh, let's just resort to partisan rhetoric on this, which is deeply embarrassing. I, I've never believed the the psycho babble you're projecting argument, but I've I, I've actually never seen a real example until this moment where someone right. literally just said, "I'm not doing that. You're doing that. That's what you're doing." <laughs> right? It's it's ridiculous. It, it's there's no question about it that these folks have for the last year and a half disregarded the science, made themselves the experts, these politicians who are not in the labs, right. and, and they use whatever data they can. It's, this, it's the, the argument that always is made is that I can go on Google and I can look up you know, right. whatever I want, whatever side of any issue, and I can find the yep. data to back me up. They pick the lab studies they want, and then they use that to extract whatever power they can. And it goes back to a conversation we had, George, a while ago on the show about these disaster declarations where it's the executive has, has so much authority to take control right. and to start demanding that certain entities do as they ask because of these disaster declarations. Which is totally fine on a very short term basis. Yes.